Hello, and thanks for checking out ChartGuys.com. We're proud to be one of the most successful technical analysis communities online, teaching you the skills to become a more confident, effective, and informed trader. Join our community of hundreds of analysts worldwide working together to learn the charts, generate profit, and achieve financial independence. For access to daily live chart analysis and market coverage, a thriving chat community, along with dozens of hours of exclusive educational materials. We look forward to seeing you. Let's check out some charts. Everyone checking in on the market for a little twilight technical analysis. We've got the spy bulls with a gap up open to all time highs. Pretty much everybody's looking strong. As we know, the burden of proof is on the bears at this point. The FOMC is this Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern. It's going to require a bearish reaction to the FOMC to try and derail these bulls. But where we stand right now, bulls have space to form daily higher lows. And if we lose a daily uptrend, we have space to form weekly higher lows. From where we stand right now, the S&P 500 can pull back over 5% and still be holding a weekly higher low. So if you've been watching, you know that I've been saying I am bullish the market as long as the weekly uptrend holds, and it has certainly been doing that. What about volume? There's no bull volume. If you look back, this is the lowest volume we've seen in 10 years, blah, blah, blah. Number one, 10 years ago, the price was a third as much as it is right now. So if we have a third as much volume as we did 10 years ago, we have the same amount of volume. Dollar volume is more important to me than share count. Number two, if there's anything that the president election in 2016 through 2017 showed us, it's that the price can go up without volume and that the price can only go down with volume. This is the biggest takeaway from broader market perspective that I have learned and applied to all of my trading for the last three years. All you have to do is look at it right here. Where's the volume? I can remember everybody saying it back then too. Where's the volume? This move isn't for real. There's no volume behind it. Well, look what the price did. And we are only higher than where we were back then. So we do not need volume to go up. We do need bear volume to go down. If you look at any bear move that has happened on the weekly time frame, it's on more than average volume. Well, that's not fair. No, it's not. This game is not fair. And big money wants the market to go up. So we have to acknowledge that and not fight the trend. So anything on SPY's daily time frame, anything above 298.50 is a daily higher low. So we have multiple percent of space to work with, about 1% of space, one and a half, 1 1.6% space to work with where we can pull back and still form a daily higher low. But again, lose the daily uptrend. We're just looking for a weekly higher low compared to the low of September. IWM, is one name along with XBI that is still in a weekly lower high pattern. This is still the equilibrium here. XLF, QQQ, they've already broken bullish, has not happened yet on IWM. We can easily stay in this weekly equilibrium for IWM even into the end of the year. So if we set a lower high this week or next week, pull back for a few weeks, that'll take us into end of November, and we could easily see this range continue to tighten. So that's something we're gonna be keeping an eye on and let's just look at XBI because XBI also on the weekly time frame has not broken resistance yet. 8412 is that resistance level. We've gotten up to 8274 at this point. When we lose the daily uptrend, that tells us the weekly lower high has been set. So it's all about 8412 resistance and currently the most important support is our daily higher low of 7971. Again, bulls have space to work with to keep this daily higher low pattern in their favor. QQQ all time high. There was our four hour equilibrium we were watching with a big time breakout and now big time follow through. Let's just look at that again. It was our high holding this double bottom kept us from getting bearish in this market. Even in short term, even looking for daily consolidation, that hold of support was key. Then we had the cup and handle breakout that is following through. When we lose the hourly uptrend and need daily consolidation, anything above 191.15 is a higher low keeping the bulls in full control. When we lose the daily uptrend, anything above 181.82 is a higher low on the weekly time frame. We can pull back seven and a half, eight percent and still be in a weekly uptrend on the queues. Google had earnings after hours, pretty much a non-reaction. We're trading where we were trading Friday and it was a slightly bearish reaction. It's been all over the place, but in the end, it's a non-event as far as I'm concerned. XLF, Continuing its move, I would expect profit taking in the financial sector heading into the FOMC, the reaction, not really known at this point. A little bit of an upper wick on today's candlestick. This lower wick is false. That did not happen on Friday. It's a mistake on this chart. The daily higher low will be anything above 27.96 to
to keep the daily uptrend intact. But if you look at individual banking names, BAC, again, when's the last time we consolidated on the daily? Very, very briefly, six, seven days ago. And we got WFC. Everybody is potentially setting up for some consolidation on the daily after being extended. And again, this is just the logic that I applied to earnings as well. BYND was one, played this bounce on BYND last week. Why? It's all bear. Because we knew earnings was in a few days and the price was absolutely crushed. So bears that are smart, in my opinion, are going to be taking profit and bulls that are viewing it as a discount are going to be looking to buy. So we oftentimes see a slight shift in opposing momentum when the momentum heading into an unknown event is very significant. So if the financial sector momentum is significant, which it is for the bulls, heading into the unknown reaction of FOMC, then I would expect some profit taking. And that's just something that I've applied to how I trade around earnings and unknown events while not having positions for them. XLV daily higher low is 91.48 and we see continuation already breaking to higher highs by getting over 92.95. And we're next now looking at 92.97, that broke. So next clear resistance is 94.15 for the healthcare sector. The VIX is dropping down, but we saw a daily inside bar today. If that inside bar breaks bullish, anything under 15.10 is just a lower high on the daily. And again, I wouldn't be surprised to see some positioning in the volatility sector as people perhaps look to hedge long-term positions heading into the FOMC. We certainly saw the FOMC reaction, what was it, a couple months ago? maybe July, where we saw that big time dump in response to it from the all-time high. It was an all-time high into a straight dump on the reaction to the FOMC. So potentially seeing some hedging if we see a daily inside bar bull break on the VIX tomorrow. Gold, I'm watching for gold and bull miners for a potential play there tomorrow. Daily uptrend is still intact. We're looking for a higher low compared to 1480. We got a bull break on our miners but the follow through is going to be dictated by the reaction to the FOMC. We're either going to see continuation or that bull break is going to be negated and we're going to head back down to test the low of consolidation to this point. Silver looking for a daily higher low as well. Anything above 1741, but honestly, not much matters the next couple days on gold and silver and miners because again, it's going to be completely thrown out the window when we see the FOMC reaction. That being said, we will be looking for one bull play, potentially, I'd like to see a gap down open on the bull miners for an entry looking for that daily higher low. We'll see if we get it. Oil. <clears throat> so oil is going to be looking for a daily higher low. And right now we have short-term support of 55.57 and 55.55. If those levels break, anything on the daily above 52.70 will be a higher low to keep those bulls in control. And Losing the daily uptrend will mean our weekly lower high has been set, but we're not close to losing the daily uptrend at this point. And last, we'll wrap it up with natural gas, getting the follow through. We've been watching this setup for over a week. Left shoulder, head, right shoulder. We broke through all those resistance levels very convincingly with increasing bull volume. Hourly uptrend still intact. We have to be cautious of a head and shoulders on this hourly chart, but anything above 2375 is an hourly high or low. And resistance is up at 2443 for the bulls to try and keep this move going. Weekly higher low is now set. So we were looking at the weekly time frame, looking at the daily time frame, and we've got all the signals we were looking for, and we're now going to be looking for a weekly lower high compared to 2708. So low, high, higher low, scouting the lower high, but we will have to lose the daily uptrend for that weekly lower high to be set. That's where we stand. Hope you're well. Do good things. We'll see you tomorrow. And we're going to wrap it up here with a timely video, more animal sanctuary. You'll see the little Boston Terrier Bruce in here. And I think Bruce gave me a whole bunch of fleas that I am now battling. And it is all out war. The fleas struck first. I've got bites all over my legs, probably two to three dozen at this point. But I hit him back with the diatomaceous earth. And I've got the washing machine running with tea tree oil, nonstop washing everything. The rugs have gone into the basement until a below freezing night to freeze everybody out of there. I'll let you know how it goes. This is certainly not my first rodeo with fleas and it certainly won't be the last.
Man, what a dinosaur noise. <laughs>